Now that we know a little bit about the imaginary unit i, let's see if we can if we can simplify more involved expressions like this one right over here. Two plus three i plus seven i squared plus five i to the third power plus nine i to the fourth power. And I encourage you to pause the video right now and try to simplify this on your own. So as you can see here, we have various powers of i. You could view this as i to the first power. We have i squared here. And we already know that i squared, i squared is defined to be negative one. Then we have i to the third power. i to the third power would just be i times this, or negative i. And we already reviewed this when we first introduced the imaginary unit i, but I'll do it again. i to the fourth power is just going to be i times this, which is the same thing as negative one times i, that's i to the third power, times i again. i times i is negative one, so that's negative one times negative one, which is equal to one again. So we can rewrite this whole thing. We could rewrite it as two plus three i. Seven i squared is going to be the same thing. So i squared is negative one. So this is the same thing as seven times negative one. So that's just going to be minus seven. And then we have five i to the third power. i to the third power is negative i. So this could be rewritten as negative i. So this term right over here we could write as minus five i or negative five i depending on how you want to think about it. And then finally i to the fourth power i to the fourth power is just one, so this is just equal to one. So this whole term just simplifies to nine. So how could we simplify this more? Well, we have several terms that, that are not, not imaginary, that they are real numbers. For example, we have this two is a real number. Negative seven is a real number. And nine is a real number. So we could just add those up. So two plus negative seven would be negative five. Negative five plus nine would be four. So the real numbers add up to four. And now we have these imaginary numbers. So three times i minus five times i. So if you have three of something, and then I were to subtract five of something, of, the, of that same something from it, now you're gonna have negative two of that something. So or another way of thinking about it is the coefficients. Three minus five is negative two. So three i's minus five i's, that's going to give you negative two i. Now you might say, well, can we simplify this any further? Well, no, you really can't. This right over here, this right over here is a real number. Four is a number that we've been dealing with throughout our mathematical careers. And negative two i, negative two i, that's an imaginary number, imaginary number. And so what we really consider this is this, this four minus two i, this is, we can now consider this entire expression to really be a number. So this is a number that has a real part and an imaginary part. And numbers like this we call complex numbers. Com, it is a complex number. It is a complex number. Why is it complex? Well, it has a real part and an imaginary part. And you might say, well, you know, gee, well, it, it wouldn't, can't any real number be considered a complex number? For example, if I have the real number, if I have the real number three, can't I just write the real number three as three plus zero i? And you would be correct. This, any real number is a complex number. You could view this. You could view this right over here as a complex number, and actually the real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. Likewise, imaginary numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. For example, you could rewrite i as a real part, zero is a real number, zero plus plus i. So the imaginaries are a subset of complex numbers, real numbers are a subset of complex numbers, and then complex numbers also have all of the, the, the sums and differences, or all of the numbers that have both real and imaginary parts.